Mary Goat. Welcome to our second uh, Artist in the Window Artist Talk of the summer of 2020, I guess for posterity. I should say it's July 9th, 2020, and we have our second Artist in the Window, Leslie Leong. Um, I want to express my gratitude for being able to work and explore culture and talk with each other and make community in the traditional territory of the Tagish Kwan people where the Kwanlandan First Nation and the Ta'an Klutch on Council govern. And I'm grateful that they do. And I'm here today with Leslie Leong, who's our second artist in the window. I'll turn it over to her once I talk about our funders. The Yukon Artists at Work, we're a not-for-profit society. We um, mostly are self-supporting, but we received arts fund project funding for this Artist in the Window summer project. Um, we also were able to cooperate with Music Yukon. So Leslie Leong is actually our first arts in the park um, artist. Music Yukon for years, like what, over 20 years or something like that, has done this wonderful thing where there's live music in the park and there's an artist demonstrating and there's a crowd of people, she said nostalgically. Um, hopefully that's something we get to do again someday. But for now, um, when, I, when we came up with this idea over the course of the winter and I approached Music Yukon because it seemed a bit like what they were going to be doing with Arts in the Park, they were really glad to hear our plan um, because they, weren't, they had a plan. You see, they're broadcasting the Arts in the Park um, uh, concerts over CJUC, the local community radio station, as a way of having the event happen without people gathering. And they had no idea what they were going to do for visual art. And we are what they're going to do. So without further ado, here's Leslie Leon. Oh. Uh, this is going so, Leslie, tell me a bit what you're working on in the window this week. So I'm working on this um, dress made of milk jugs. I call it Milk Maid. Um, it's made of only milk jugs and pop rivets. So I put them together with pop rivets. And um, I cut them apart, so each of these panels I use, and this top part I also use in the top of the dress. Um, yeah, and I, oh yes, the reason why I'm making one is because I lost one. So mm -hmm. I had one that was exhibited um, frequently, or each year at um, the redesign fair. It was also worn by Lynn Fabio, actually here it is, is the one. Um, it was worn by Lynn Fabio in the fashion show for the Junction Arts, um, what is it, the Sewing Through the Landscape, the Artist Residency, so yeah. Yeah, in Haynes Junction, it's yeah. such a great thing. Yeah. And then at the last redesign fair, it... It blew off in the winter, <laughs> so sad. Yeah. And I tried to find it and I even put notices, I thought, you know, I didn't find it, so I thought maybe someone might have picked it up for me. It would have been kind and of white never, on white, though, yeah, at that point. Yeah. yeah, and it was windy. Yeah, and it, it must really have broken windy. your heart, because it did. It was so sad. It was such a beautiful <laughs> thing you made, and also, you, like, you kind of inadvertently littering. Yes, I felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> but you're recreating it, and that's yes. wonderful. A little bit, it'll be a little bit different, for sure, because mm -hmm. this will be version 2.0. <laughs> yes, of so, course. Yeah. It's part of your series of dress sculptures, based yeah. on. So this will actually be wearable. <laughs> yes, the other one was, and I do want this one to be wearable, too. That's why I had to pad the mannequin because mm -hmm. it's uh, not realistic, the mannequin. <laughs> so it has to be big enough that it can fit a real person. Fair enough. Cool. So would you like to talk a little bit uh, about, we had a question from Dee Bailey about your process in working with the plastic. Oh, yeah. So um, originally I was making, I decided to use milk jugs to make swans because one of the schools wanted to do a swan project and so I thought okay you know what can we make it out of and I'm, I'm passionate about reusing materials instead of um, you know buying new materials so I figured out a way to draw um, parts onto the milk jug and you take you use the whole milk jug except for the lid and you turn it into a milk jug swan this one's seen better days because it's been squished in a bag but um, anyways yeah um, and the reason why this material is great is because it's flexible, it's easy to cut, it's easily available, and it's bendable. And so it's kind of like the um, 
wrapping presents, the ribbon. It, um, as you can see, this little piece here is bent that way, but if you do the ribbon thing, like you do, then it curves the other way, or you can curve it back up the other way. So, cool. yeah. So it's a very versatile material. And it's also very light. Yes, very light. And uh, totally. so you can also uh, uh, use heat with it, is that right? Yes, you can. Um, it, it helps to bend and form. It, you just have to make sure it cools before um, you let it go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can also actually melt holes into it and all things like that. Like actually the electric powered plastic plant was the first um, thing that I made with um, yeah, actually, I mean, that before the swans, I guess it was. So that was for the TEDx White Horse uh, set design. It was one of three pieces. And yeah, it's got milk jugs and pop bottles and water bottles and egg cartons. All wow. plastic, yeah. Electric powered plastic plants. <laughs> so there's also these two figures up here which have a nice. Uh, would you, would you like to hear? I'll, I'll uh, bring the light through them. Would you like sure. to talk about Because transparency seems to be something you enjoy. Yes, I do like when things you can see through. The, I don't know, it's just uh, very beautiful. So these are two formed on a pregnant woman, and they're made out of sewing patterns, and you can see the light coming through, um, through them. I really... So anyways, the, so this is just sewing patterns, partly because they're recycled, but also because it honors the whole process of sewing, mm -hmm. which we don't honor enough in our society, I think, like we do, for example, sheet metal workers who do the same. They have a pattern, and mm -hmm. they cut it out, and then they make things. Mm -hmm. Well, people, seamstresses and tailors do that too, but we don't honor it in the same way. So I find that it's also a way of honoring that process. And that works kind of well with the fact that these are depicting someone who's making another person inside their body yeah. too. So yeah. there's a, a making making. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And then I sometimes use those with kids in um, workshops, you know, using, it's hard to see, I guess, because of the, the lack of light inside, but um, making little vessels. We made troll dishes once, actually. Oh, cool. <laughs> Out of, uh, yeah, the and, sewing patterns. And you said, be, although the patterns are like tissue paper, it's a much stronger tissue paper than, you know, your standard issue. Yes, yes. So paper. they're very light, very thin, but they're also quite strong. Mm. Yeah, whereas tissue paper just kind of shreds. So Janet Patterson had a question about the moment when you knew that you were going to make being an artist your life's work. Um, yeah, so I suppose it wasn't necessarily just a moment, but <laughs> <laughs> it was more of a process. Yeah, process. But um, so it was back in 94, I guess, around 94, 95. And I was already doing a lot of photography. And I... Actually, in 95, I gave birth to my son, and I wanted to be home with him. So I knew this was coming, so I mm -hmm. had a plan. <laughs> so I left my engineering job at the government mm -hmm. and decided to, you know, really do photography and graphic design because I could do it from home. Um, and because I'd been doing photography on the side anyways, and mm -hmm. I also had a company with a friend in um, Vancouver for a couple of years, a graphic design company. I was more the manager, but you know, I learned a lot and I helped a lot, so, so I knew stuff. Um, so that was kind of the beginnings, but it was more of a way to be home and make income. Mm -hmm. And that grew into um, more of uh, the art side of things, as I participated in the Great Northern Arts Festival, actually, mm -hmm. and um, applied for Arts Council grants and got a few of those. And I thought, oh, maybe, you know, this is great. I really mm -hmm. enjoy this much more. I find it way more fulfilling than the other stuff that uh, I had been doing. And, you know, one of the things, I mean, I find your work is often concerned with materials. 
and their properties and very and ingenious uses or reuses of the materials. Mm. Do you find that some of your engineering background plays a part in your art making? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's what I mean, probably lots of people can figure out ways to do these. But for sure, I think that's just that way of thinking that, you know, oh, OK, here's a useful material or here's a material that I like. How can I use it? That, mm -hmm. And that that process of problem solving. I think that's for me part of the challenge that I really like. Yeah, I love I like telling people art eats everything. <laughs> It does. It's true. Anything that you happen to have, it'll find a way to put it to yes. use. Um, cool. So would you like to talk a bit, speaking of eating everything, about the redesign fair? Yeah. So the redesign fair is a fair that uh, was our fifth anniversary last year. Mm -hmm. Darren Holcomb and I um, um, have, whatever, put that on each year in the last five years because we're both passionate about recycled materials. Um, Part of the, the, the piece is that we feel like we should be using recycled materials because we should be more like an ecosystem. We shouldn't be a society or a system or an economic system that just uses and then throws away. We should be circulating that stuff back around again and reusing it like an ecosystem. All the waste gives birth to new life. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we wouldn't have a lot of the problems we have now if we behaved more like that. So that's sort of where that comes from for both of us. Um, and the other thing that, so the redesign fair is um, all artisans and their products that are made substantially out of recycled materials. And lots of times people think that that might be junky looking stuff, but it's actually really beautiful. And that's part of the drive for us is to demonstrate to people um, how our materials can be remade into amazing and beautiful things. It, it mm -hmm. doesn't, it doesn't need to be junky. So um, yeah, so that, that's part of that. Uh, that's what that redesign fair is all about. And I guess not just to show people that coming are coming to visit, but also to encourage art, artisans and um, makers to make things out of recycled materials. Yeah. Cool. To be part of the solution. <laughs> mm. So, and would you like to talk a bit about something that's coming up for you or oh, a yeah. new project? So, I have this permafrost project and I went in January up to Tuck and I got some permafrost, 485 pounds, and I hauled it down to Whitehorse. Okay, so this is Tuck Diactic in the Northwest Territories for people who... On the Arctic Ocean. Yes. There, a road has gone through there just a couple of years ago. So, uh, an all-year-round all road. Yeah. Okay, please carry yeah. on. Just, yeah, yeah, that's you know, a good in idea. Case someone's just listening thought. to this yeah. in Montreal. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I brought it down here with the plan to melt it in the McBride Museum, or not in the museum, but in the courtyard, mm -hmm. um, because then it's a public place and people could see it and interact with it. And um, the plan was to do a time-lapse video there of it melting in the spring as nature just naturally melts it. Mm -hmm. And then, so I, they, they closed because of COVID. So mm -hmm. I had to haul the 485 pounds out of there mm -hmm. and into my front yard. And so I did it in the front yard. And then I ended up with like, a, you know, my, two hands cupped full of, not even full maybe, um, mm -hmm. of um, material left after the permafrost melted. So the idea is to demonstrate how little soil is left after the permafrost melts. So communities in the circumpolar world, many of them are just gonna slump into the ocean. And that's only one aspect of climate change. Mm -hmm. There's lots of other things going on in the world, but it's one way, one thing that I wanted to do to give people a personal connection to the reality of what, what's happening for one area of the planet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it will be an exhibit eventually, and I'm going to, be going to exhibit the small pile of soil with full-scale models of the permafrost before it melted because I took forms with um, chicken wire and did measurements and weights and things mm -hmm. like that. So, And yeah. what are you thinking of making the permafrost out of? 
plexiglass. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> so mostly recycled plexiglass, actually. So um, yeah, it's a thermoplastic. And so I will be using other thermoplastics too. So I have a bit to learn on that in that area. But um, yeah, I, I know it's possible. So I just have to figure out how I'm going to do it so that, yeah, they are, yeah, representative of the ice blocks that I got. And yeah, I'm going to mix some words with it too, actually, because um, Joanna Lilly has, mm. she came to visit it quite frequently during mm -hmm. the melt because she's interested in, in the whole extinction thing. And so that's another form <laughs> of extinction. I you suppose. see, I think that's what like Janet Patterson was going to be up at the um, oh. art center and I believe that what they were aiming to do was an outdoor reading from Joanna Lilly's. Oh, they didn't do it. I think because of the rain. Oh, um, but it's probably coming up. So if okay, you're good. listening to this video soon, keep an eye out because yes. Joanna Lilly, of whom Leslie Leong is speaking, uh, is probably going to be doing uh, a reading from her new book in the not too distant future. Yes. Um, is there anything in particular you'd like to add right now, Leslie? Um, there was other questions. Um, I think that I think that, that kind it? of yeah, gives yeah, most yeah. of it. Maybe I'll just I'll just acknowledge that um, we had lovely uh, people attending, and I thought I was recording earlier. So this is our second go at recording it. And so <laughs> Janet and Dee, if you're wondering where you are. It's because yes. I'm learning, and uh, <laughs> so um, yeah. So this is our second go and a recording. Uh, tune in next week. You can register for the artist talks by phoning Yukon Arts at Work at three nine three four eight four eight or emailing yaw at artlover dot com y a a w at artlover dot com. Um, oh yes. <laughs> The end of Monday. Yes. So yeah. That so we can see. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. can come visit the forums. Visit the milkmaid dress. Um, and um, many other things made out of recycled materials. Yes. And in Leslie Dumal herself is here on Friday at eleven to two still. So you can come and have a visit and answer any questions or ask any questions you may still have. I'll also let you know that coming up, we have we're going to be doing one artist talk for each of the ten artists in the windows artists in the window over the course of the summer. This is number two. Um, next week, we'll be talking with Lillian Laponen, uh, who will be doing, who's been doing some portraits of faces to add to her atmospheric um, watercolor and acrylics. She's actually going to be working in, on, on an iPad, working digitally. Oh, wow. um, after that, Dennis Shorty will be in the window. He'll be working on some antler and copper jewelry. Um, and then we have Amber Church, and then Dee Bailey, and more to come. So tune in, have your favorite beverage handy, you can put your feet up, it's much more <laughs> chill than your normal artist talk. Um, or you could even be working on your own art project and just treat this as a little podcast. So hopefully, um, yeah, let us know whether you saw this video, and uh, we hope that you enjoyed it, and we hope that we get to connect with you for the next one. Anything for today? No, just thank you, Nicole. That <laughs> it was uh, great. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Bye for Bye. now.